Year 8, The Rule of Astronautonomicron So, first off, look who's back! About 12 of our large pachyderm friends decided to take up residence just beyond the river, where so many of their family members were cooked alive by an ocean of boiling water. They've yet to cause my dwarves any trouble, well, except maybe this one guy. Eurist Cyrilzolak, Trapper, is stunned. His right upper arm is moderately injured. His right hand is terribly injured. He's in extreme pain. And he looks so happy, too! And then this poor fella drowned! Os Reith Melbill, mechanic, has drowned. Noting our lack of gems, both rough and cut, I set about designating a large area for excavation. The double-wide spacing allows maximum exposure of gems, with the least amount of effort. Plus, it'll keep our few mining doors busy for a good long while. On the 15th of granite, those pointy-eared pricks that refused to bring anything useful for trading arrived. Unfortunately, they were just south of the massive herd of elephants by a few screens and reached the trade depot unscathed. Plus, it seems the actions of one former ruler upset the great elven civilization. Lema Seralisei says, You have disrespected the trees in this area, but this is what we've come to expect from your stunted kind. Further abuse cannot be tolerated. Let this be a warning to you. Crying Dwarf added for dramatic effect. Shortly after the elves arrive, we received another glorious gift from the outside world! Immigrants times 21! Along with them came a treasurer, tax collector, hammerer, mason's guild master, and dungeon master. Due to the sorry state of our current noble housing area, I set about designating new homes for our distinguished brethren. I'm also working on fulfilling all of our current nobles' requirements. They've gone without studies and dining rooms for far too long, and they're nearing revolt. Or maybe they just impose bans on certain exports. In any event, rest assured that when my reign ends, all nobles will be fully satisfied, and those that aren't will be sleeping at the bottom of the river with a big floppy penis monster! For now, I leave you with a shot of what will be my final resting place. Note the excessive amount of elephant engravings. All the dwarf engravings are them either melting or in the fetal position. Boat murdered! Yes, I'm responsible for the terribly corny channel arrangement spelling out S.A., and I apologize. So, on to the update. Uh, dum -de -do, all's well in boat murder. Oh, shit! See, one of my jailed masons decided to go all ah on the poor fellow that was bringing him water. The innocent green dwarf is in the process of being hurled into a stone wall in the shot above. Taking a brief respite from his brutal attack on the jeweler, our escaped convict then ruthlessly slays a nearby cat and proceeds to kick the mortally wounded jeweler around the prison until he dies. Aww. As he attempts to flee the scene of the crime, he's intercepted by a nearby swords dwarf, and a fierce battle ensues. After being beaten senseless and tossed around like a rag doll, our brave swords dwarf falls unconscious. That mason is wielding an artifact bracelet. Two fortress guards rush the murderer, and one gets disabled almost instantly. The other one manages to send Mr. Mason flying all the way down the hallway and into a wall. Victory. There is our hero and savior, Eshton Burial Gears, and some random Mark's dwarf that took no part in the battle and just showed up for the picture. One dwarf was dead on the spot, and two others are probably going to die from their wounds, but at least now some lucky dwarf gets to take ownership of that marvelous bracelet. About a week after all that carnage, one of our dwarfs gets inspired. Kel Dodo Krazot has begun a mysterious construction. Ooh, it is a mystery. This is an aventurine chest. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. On the item is an image of a dog and a mandrel in aventurine. The dog is making a plaintive gesture. The mandrel is striking a menacing pose. Success! Amazingly, there's no imagery of either elephants, melting, or dwarf-on-dwarf -dwarf crime. Astronautonomicron posted, 
Sorry, I failed to schedule my DF time properly. Nothing really important happened during the seasons I played anyway, so someone might have better luck with interesting updates. Editor's Note At this point, Astronaut Anomicron became unable to complete his turn. The fortress was reverted to the end of Sankus' turn, and was handed over to Unknowing, as if Astro's turn had not happened. In the resulting downtime, Stark Raving Mad went on an exploration of an alternate universe boat murdered in adventure mode to check out the detail on the artwork our dwarves had created thus far. Stark Raving Mad posted, Intermission! Journal of Ushav Bitaranel, Human Archaeologist. Entry 1. After long searching, I believe I've finally found the ruins of the dwarven fortress that was hypothesized to have been in the smooth points of pride. According to the ancient journals we found, it was called Kogana's San in the dwarven tongue which roughly translates to Boat Murdered. It is unknown from what that name derives, how excited the guild will be. We've been looking for this outpost for some time now, as it may shed some light into the historical events of the time period around 1050. Perhaps I can find some old records or journals in here which will be instructive. I will proceed immediately into the cavern and see if this is indeed the remnants of the fortress. Entry 2 It's better than I could have hoped. The fortress is truly grand. This must have been an outpost of great value to the Dwarvish Kingdom. I cannot yet tell how deep into the mountain it goes, but it appears to be quite fast. And even more importantly, the dwarves preserved their history not in books, but in the stone of the fortress itself. Many of the surfaces are engraved with depictions of the historical events of the time. I will endeavor to determine what some of these pictures mean and document them via descriptions and charcoal rubbings to take back to the guild for entry into the great histories. I cannot imagine why no one has documented this before. Entry 3 It appears that the people of Boat Murdered encountered great sorrow. Apparently, they had enormous amounts of trouble with the local pachyderms. Rakust Agek the Tomb of Bees. Engraved on the floor is a superiorly designed image of Zasset Geared Mountain, the dwarf, and Sorship, the youthful spasm, the elephant, by Tourette Doge Regunib. Sorship, the youthful spasm, is striking down Zasset Geared Mountain. The artwork relates to the killing of Zasset Geared Mountain by Sorship, the youthful spasm, in Boat Murdered in the early summer of 1056. Edos Gugun, The Amazement of Froth. Engraved on the floor is an exceptionally designed image of Sodal Lock Painted, the Dwarf, and Lung Despair, the Nettle of Meditating, the Elephant, by Sankis Gatimboric. Lung Despair, the Nettle of Meditating, is striking down Sodal Lock Painted. The artwork relates to the killing of Soda Lock Painted by Lung Despair, the Nettle of Meditating, in Boat Murdered in the mid-autumn of 1055. Dith Bis Zugo Psakstok Takud, the Limp Grand Muck of Pix. Engraved on the floor is a superiorly designed image of Kogan Cloister Peaceful, the Dwarf, and Gifted Shears, the Ageless Greed, the Elephant, by Tourette Doge Regunib. Gifted Shears the Ageless Greed is striking down Kogan Cloister Peaceful. The artwork relates to the killing of Kogan Cloister Peaceful by Gifted Shears the Ageless Greed in Boat Murdered in the early autumn of 1055. Limelnod, the Golden Toad. Engraved on the floor is a masterfully designed image of Unib Mountain Tomb, the Dwarf, and Petalnut, the Romantic Lucid Drum of Dreaming, the Elephant, by Tourette's Regunib. Petalnut, the romantic lucid drum of dreaming, is striking down Unib Mountain Tomb. These are just a representative sample. There are dozens and dozens of engravings of dwarves being struck down by a seemingly endless herd of legendary named elephants. 
The slaughter must have been unimaginable. I cannot conceive of what they must have done to engender this much hatred from the elephants. It seems they did fight back and eventually triumph against the elephants, however. For Gigabankalad, the pulpy constructive ghoul. Engraved on the floor is a finely designed image of Sorship, the youthful spasm, the elephant, and Takud ring geniuses, the dwarf, by Toretto's Regunib. Sorship, the youthful spasm, is making a plaintive gesture. Takud ring geniuses is laughing. The artwork relates to the mortal wounding of Sorship, the youthful spasm, by Takud ring geniuses in Boat Murdered in the Midsummer of 1056. So the great elephant attacks do not provide a clear reason why boat murdered was eventually lost. Their numbers were probably weakened by these elephant attacks, however, and it seems some dwarves died from their wounds or from starvation or dehydration while wounded. Avan Raliger, the Lyrical Silvery River Engraved on the floor is an exceptionally designed image of Kel Plains Mirror, the dwarf, by Tourette Doge Regunib. Kel Plains Mirror is withering away. The artwork relates to the dehydration of Kel Plains Mirror in Boat Murdered in the late winter of 1052. Entry 4. Apparently the mandrel was the official symbol of the dwarven civilization. Ralgomath, the Silvery Legend. Engraved is a fine Toretto's Regunib rendition of a well-designed image of mandrels. The image is the symbol of the Oaken Tomes, a dwarven civilization. The dwarves of Boat Murdered were capable of great feats of artistry and craftsmanship, or should I say crafts dwarfship, haha. <laughs> there were engravings of great artifacts being created. Eknarotud, the ugly stalker. Engraved on the floor is a finely designed image of stark raving mad Helm's Howls, the dwarf, and Sound Syrup, the mahogany table, by Tourette Doge Regunib, Stark Raving Mad Helm's Howls is raising sound syrup. The artwork relates to the creation of sound syrup in Boat Murdered by Stark Raving Mad Helm's Howls in the early summer of 1052. Thay Biludro Kovath, the Silky Ox of Bushels. Engraved on the floor is a finely designed image of the Land of Sweetness, the small gold chain leggings by Tourette Doge Regunib. I found some old coins, also of great artistry, depicting trade relations between Boat Murdered and other dwarven locations. Kin Mel Bill 1055 Silver Coins This is a stack of eight Kin Mel Bill 1055 Silver Coins. This is the silver currency of Kin Mel Bill from the year 1055. On the front of the coin is an exceptionally designed image of dwarves. The dwarves are laboring. The artwork relates to the foundation of Hamatic by the systemic spry bolts of pulling of the oaken tomes in four. On the coin's back is a masterfully designed image of dwarves and dwarves. The dwarves are speaking with the dwarves. The artwork relates to the visit of merchants from the oaken tomes to the oaken tomes at Boat Murdered in the late autumn of 1054. Entry 5. Wait, I hear sounds from deeper within the fortress. Perhaps some remnant of the ancient civilization lives yet. Could the dwarves merely have retreated deeper into the mountain and cut off ties with the outside world? This is fascinating. I will go see what is making these noises immediately. The troll punches you in the upper arm with her left hand. It is broken. The troll punches you in the left upper leg with her right hand. It is battered. The troll punches you in the upper leg with her right hand. It is bruised. The troll punches you in the lower body with her right hand. It explodes in gore. You have been struck down. Star Craving Mad posted, so, all this is pretty cool. See, as you look at the engravings, it adds stuff to the Uncovered Legends list. Things like people, art, and it even compiles a current history of Boat Murdered, all that I've discovered. Koganu-san, Boat Murdered. Boat Murdered was a mountain fortress, 
Only the barest fragments of this amazing story have been uncovered. It is one of the great untold tales of our time. In the early spring of 1051, the persuasive bodices of the Oaken Tomes founded Boat Murdered. In the early summer of 1052, sound syrup was created in Boat Murdered by Stark Raving Mad Helm's Howls. In the late winter of 1052, Kel Plainsmere died from thirst in Boat Murdered. From there, many, many, many other dwarves died in Boat Murdered with the occasional merchant visit. So yeah, all this is pretty cool. I've never really tried to explore a fortress deep before. And you can click on all the art and people that are in your legends list and look at what it says. So once I've explored deep enough to get more engravings, if there's any interest, I'll upload the save file. And then people can go look at the legends and read all the neat engravings. Stark Raving Mad posted, Here's directions to Boat Murdered from the main map, for anyone who wants to go explore it in adventure mode from one of the previous saves. I had a bitch of a time finding it the first time, so I figured I'd save anyone who wants to go look at it some time. First, create a dwarf starting from Kinmel Bill. You'll probably start in either Mountains or Hamatek, both pictured below. Hamatek was on the coins that I found in Boat Murdered as a place our dwarves traded with, so I figured this was probably the closest starting point. Head south through the pale swamp of saviors. You'll walk quite a ways south. Keep going until you hit water. Then cut east around the water and keep heading south, following the edge of the lake. Keep heading directly south when you can, and you'll end up in the basic jungle of destroyers. Watch out for tigers. Keep heading directly south until you hit mountains. This is the smooth points of pride. Follow the western edge of the mountains, and you'll find Boat Murdered. Home sweet home. Star Craving Mad posted, Final Dwarven Archaeology Update, and just in time too, since the game is continuing now. There was no way to get deeper into the fortress on my own, so I had a brilliant idea. I drafted an army. Things go a lot smoother with six elite dwarves helping you. With the dwarves at my side, I made it deep into the fortress. I think I found pretty much all the major engraving sites, such as the dining hall and the tombs. And finally, I made it to the magma. So here's a few more worthwhile engravings I saw. First, a dwarf's love for dogs memorialized for all time. Bago Sined, the slime of sweat. Engraved on the wall is a finely designed image of English wheel sidle, the dwarf, and two dogs, by Tourette Doge Regunib. English wheel sidle is embracing the two dogs. Next we have uh, these dwarf is speaking to the dwarf elf whoever engravings. They all seem to be documenting visits from trade caravans. Lolo Kakim, the granite brilliances. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of elves and dwarves by Toretto's Regunib. The elves are speaking with the dwarves. The artwork relates to the visit of merchants from the Fangs of Confederacy to the Oaken Tomes at Boat Murdered in the mid-spring of 1054. And here we see that someone knew their history. Sakub Inen, the Dumpling of Hills. Engraved on the wall is a finely designed image of Bewa Kindness Tarnished, the Demon, by Toretto's Regunib. Bewa Kindness Tarnished is cringing. The artwork relates to the imprisonment of Bewa Kindness Tarnished in Adamantine, deep within the smooth points of pride, in a time before time. And here we have one of the Goblin Siege, Sumun Kishtist, the Griffin of Freezing. Engraved on the wall is a superiorly designed image of Goblins and Dwarves by Tourette Doge Regunib. The Goblins are fighting with the Dwarves. The artwork relates to the attack on the persuasive bodices of the Oaken Tomes at Boat Murdered by the Lucid Sin in the early winter of 1055. And finally we have lots of engravings documenting the Great Magma Flood of 1057. Sosmil Kasith, the Lice of Prowling. Eager Shoshil Biban, the Old Stick of Balls. Thubi Lokbad, the Nasty Doom. Ralzasakub, the Silvery Crystalline Dumpling. Ankosh, the Red Slaughter. 
All of these are beautiful engravings, most of which depict either people or animals burning. They relate to the magma flood in the midwinter of 1057. Thank you.